Yeah, shipping itself is by definition a global industry. We are moving goods from one continent to another continent. Predominantly these days uh, consumer goods from China to US and Europe. But uh, it could also be industrial equipment from Europe to China. It can be wind energy equipment, uh, can be oil and gas uh, equipment which needs to go from US Houston to all places in the world. So in itself the trade is global and the industry itself is as well. You cannot use other means for transportation if it's over a certain distance like a thousand miles or two thousand miles. And these large container vessels, the bigger they are, the better are the cost per kilo or per ton you transport there. If you want to fly these amounts, it becomes extremely expensive. So I think for global trade, shipping has no alternative. Cost-wise, you have two large elements in, a, in running a ship daily. It's the fuel cost, and we are burning on a medium-sized vessel these days. We burn about 100 tons of fuel a day. You multiply that by 300 to 400 dollars, so it's 30 to 40 thousand dollars a day on sea. Two thirds of the time the vessel is at sea, you might say, so it's something between 25 and 30 thousand dollars a day on average on fuel cost. And you have the operating expenses, which is about five, six thousand dollars for crew, for insurance, things like that. And you have the, the capex, that might be another 20 to 40 thousand dollars a day. So fuel is a very big element one third to one half of the total cost of running a, a big vessel daily. The industry is burning about four million barrels of heavy fuel oil each day. This is roughly four percent of the total oil production. And part of that is extremely dirty stuff, so to say. It's residual from the refineries, usually with a pretty high content of sulfur and other chemicals. So shipping has not the best um, balance if it comes to being green. What helps there is of course that fuel is expensive and everything which is reducing consumption is seen directly at the bottom line of the shipping companies. And I would probably see that as a stronger force behind uh, changing the vessels, changing the fuels uh, we are using in shipping. And that makes it also an interesting market for technology companies. The question is how to, to make a ship green. The simple answer is you will never make a cargo vessel really green except you make it a sailing vessel. What you can do is to reduce the amount of fuel you have per ton mile. And the simple way is uh, to go slower with the vessels. So instead of going 24 knots or 25 knots with a back vessel consuming 250 tons um, of uh, fuel oil a day, you go, I don't know, 18 knots or so and you consume something like 100 tons. So you need to add more capacity, more vessels, but overall the cost will be lower by using more vessels, going slower, consuming less fuel. Then the next thing is to change the hull of the vessel and to change the the design of the propeller and everything else. So by optimizing the vessel for the lower speed, that's how you can reduce again the consumption maybe by 20% or so. That's the easiest way. The next thing which might come up is you might retrofit existing diesel or heavy fuel oil fueled vessels to LNG based vessels. It's liquefied natural gas. It burns in a cleaner way and does not contain chemicals like sulfur and other. It's a bigger investment, it's still possible. You can run the existing two-stroke, four-stroke engines also with LNG. And by definition then it is a cleaner fuel and probably in the medium term also available at a lower price than fuel oil. What we see as a future potential fuel offering a lot of benefits is hydrogen. Hydrogen burns nicely, uh, creates water again, and the next generation of engines will be fuel cells. And uh, it's a very nice device to propel uh, vessels as well. Submarines are using it already, some ferries are using it already. 
fuel cells are actually produced mainly in US and Europe these days. Uh, so that could be a very interesting alternative fuel in the future. Today, vessels are usually built in Asian countries. This is China and then Korea and maybe a little bit of Japan. There's not much shipbuilding left in uh, Europe, Germany or uh, US, except specialized vessels like cruise vessels, big private yachts and marine uh, vessels, military vessels. What is more interesting in US and Europe is uh, that a lot of the equipment on the vessels, besides the hull, is still produced um, by technology companies in US, in Europe, that might be nautical equipment like radar, like all the electronic uh, steering for the engines. The engine design is done uh, often in, in Europe. So technology is still coming from the US and, and from Europe. And maybe looking into the future, developing and producing more electronic equipment, fuel cells for propulsion, that will be a big market. Every year shipbuilding investments are about 40 billion. And you could say half of that or even more will go into the equipment going to the vessel. So it's a very interesting market for the Americans and for the Europeans uh, to participate in. China's advantage now in shipping is uh, they have developed over the last 20 years very competitive uh, large shipyards, which is supported by the labor cost advantage they have, but it's also supported by the relatively fast ability surrounding the cutting red tape, making sure that investments can be done relatively quickly, it's a relatively reliable framework there. It's nothing which gives China some uh, control over trade flows or supply of goods to, to various countries. If, if one port would be too expensive, let's assume China buys a port in Piraeus in Greece and they suddenly raise the tariffs there, the cargo would use other ways uh, to come into the country. So it's only a limited ability to, to influence something by buying ports. So far, US and EU are the biggest importers of goods. So that gives a certain leverage to introduce environmental standards, for example. On the other hand, we see China being also pretty uh, tough on environmental standards these days. They also have ECA areas there with the same requirements like US and, and Europe. So I don't see it very much as US and Europe against China, but it helps of course if the transatlantic partners have a similar understanding to find also an agreement with China. By nature of the business, most of what happens on a vessel is happening outside national boundaries. So whenever you want to change regulation in shipping, you need to find an agreement of all participating states, which are organized in the International Maritime Organization, IMO. And that IMO needs to find a compromise. So it took, I don't know, maybe 20 years to agree to lower the sulfur content of the fuel you can burn. So changes in regulation are complicated. The beauty here is that most of the receiving ports for cargo are in US and are in Europe. And here you can install common requirements for pollution or avoiding pollution actually. And California gives a good example. If you go to ports in California, your vessels need to be equipped with uh, shore supply for electricity. So there are ways to push the industry to make the, the production greener. This is where Europe and US can lead by setting similar standards. Looking at shipping, I mean, it's a transportation means that will not change. Global trade will not become smaller, it will grow further. But that industry is, is offering opportunities for both transatlantic partners. And looking at the US, I think, um, the US flag system needs some overhaul. 40-year-old vessels are neither green uh, nor safe. It's legitimate to protect an industry, to protect the workers there with the trade unions and shipping and so on. But it's still possible to modernize the fleet. Where would I ask the new administration to look at is simply to see shipping as an opportunity to create technology leadership in US 
to have the understanding in, in cargo and playing a bigger role in the shipping industry in a 40 billion market every year. I think that's an interesting point for an administration. It's creating employment, it's creating income, and it's making the world a bit greener.